Hey guys, this is Mary from Sharing Kindergarten, and today I want to share with you a really great digital learning tool called Quizzes. It is free and it is so much fun. So I'm going to show you a few things about Quizzes today. So the first thing is I went to the website Quizzes, and I have it's free. I, I don't have a pay, paid version at all, so I love that. And we're going to do a few things in Quizzes. Today, let's start by creating a game. So up at the top, it says create a new game. And we're going to call this game Addition. One of the things I recommend when you're starting, I'm going to select math real quick. When you're starting quizzes, it's use something that's going to be quick for you to make so you can test it, um, that your students are going to be successful in because sometimes the first time we do it, we want to, to them to learn how to play this game, not necessarily to learn a new skill. Um, and that way we can get feedback whether it's relevant and good for our students. Um, other things to think about just long term are, um, I don't always have the best readers in kindergarten, so if I made this a really long reading game, that might stress my kids out. So I like to use quizzes for letters, for sounds, rhyming words, CVC words, shorter little things um, versus reading a whole sentence, and I love to use it for math. So today we're using it for math. All right, so I just did addition, and I'm going to go in here to create a question. So my question is going to be really easy. Now up here you can select more than one answer, but I'm not doing that today. I'm just going to come in here and create a very simple math game. Now you can add math equations, which I've heard from upper grade teachers who teach complex math problems, not me, that that's really helpful. Or I know sometimes they like to take pictures of images with graphs or harder math equations and they like to enter those up here. So you have some of those options. For lower grades, I really like that um, picture option because you can show them a picture of a dog and then have like um, the words written um, down below and only one of them is actually the correct word dog. So you can work on things like that. But today we're just doing very simple. So I'm going to add different solutions to my problem below. And again, you can add math equations or images right here too. Now I'm going to select the right answer with the check mark and I'm going to change this a lot of time to let it be a little longer, especially if you have kids that get the math problem correctly. They just kind of get stressed, especially when they play these games. Let's, let's let them chill out and enjoy the game. Let's let them learn this format. It doesn't always have to be a rush. So I'm going to hit save. All right. If you want to go back and edit, you just go back up to that pencil and you can edit. You can see where you are and you can make any changes. Now, I love how it shows you what it's going to look like on the child's screen. This is different from some other games like Kahoot because the answer is actually on the color. So they don't have to look at the screen and then find where it is on their device. It's on their device, the answer is. So that's a great thing to keep in mind. All right, now I'm going to add another question. And I'm going to do this one a little bit faster because you kind of already get the hang of it. All right. And then I'm going to change it to 60 seconds, hit save, and I'm going to do maybe one more. Now, typically I do, of course, several questions, maybe 10, maybe 20, because um, if I get my kids all logged in, I want it to be worth their time to play. Like, I don't want to give them just three questions, but for the um, relevance of what we're doing now, we'll make it happen. Okay, now it's going to tell you over here what you can do to make your quiz better. Um, you can add grades, have at least four questions. All right, you convinced me. I'm going to make it four questions because apparently you say that's better. I do think it's better, but I'm just being silly. All right, and it'll just tell you if it's a good quality game. All right, so now we're going to go and I'm going to finish the quiz. I'm going to add from kindergarten to first grade. And I'll let everybody see this one, no big deal. And I'll show you how that's going to be meaningful in just a minute. And I'm going to hit save. Okay. Now, I don't want to share this with anybody, but I could easily share it with people in my grade level if I wanted to. Now, here's the really fun part about quizzes if you've never used it. We have several options over here that we can use. So we have Play Live, which is what I use in my classroom so we can all play this game together. And if you got on like a virtual conferencing app, you guys could still play live all together, and that would be a lot of fun. We have the assigned homework, which is super great, and that's what we're going to use in just a minute. But we're going to see this solo practice, okay? 
So I kind of want to open that in a separate tab, but we'll show you right here. Solo practice is really great because it allows you to do um, playing so the kid can play by themselves if they want to practice, especially if some kids have some anxiety or just want to figure it up. You can even eliminate some of these distractions in there that would be really great for kids or enable read aloud if you want to differentiate. And they even have a flashcard review. So keep that in mind, okay? All right, I'm going to go back out. I want to finish, finish my quiz. All right. I've made a few of these as practice. All right. So that's the practice one. And you can see how to do that. Now say I want to share a quiz with kids that we want to do, okay? We're going to we're going to all play this together. Let me go into a different one real quick. <laughs> go to my teacher dashboard go to my quizzes and this is the game we just created so we have our live which I told you is in the classroom or my assigned homework that's what I'm using the most right now so I'm going to assign the homework and I'm just going to push this skill the longest I can no big deal and I'm going to you can assign it to different classes so say you have um a kindergarten class and then maybe a first grade class in the afternoon in your EIP. You could easily assign different games to different groups. But I'm just going to host the game. I'm not going to assign it to anybody. And then it'll give me this link right here. So what I'm going to do is, oh, you know what? I can actually copy this link and then hopefully put it on a, um, a different one. So I'm horrible about remembering numbers. So I'm going to write it down. I'm going to write 501885, and then I'm going to open a new tab. But I don't want this to be, so it automatically defaulted to admin if you saw that. So I'm going to go to the quizzes one. Oh, we'll stop going there. And then I want my kids to join a game. Now, if they're not logged in, that won't be an option. And we're going to hit that same number, 501885, and we're going to join the game. OK, so this is for students at a distance. So it has me in there because I'm logged into quizzes, but kids can just put their name or they can put their um, lunch number, their student number, anything like that. And they're going to start games. So let's see how this looks. It gives them a little meme. And I'm pretty confident I have my computer Question. sound Five plus one turned down. But if you can't Five hear it, one. it's reading it to them. And it gives me points. Nobody else has played it yet, so, I'm, so there's nobody to play against. Question five plus two equals okay, I'm going to purposely miss this one. Question six plus two equals. Now, it has a special thing, which was redemption. I missed one, so it's going to allow me to go try that one again. I really like that skill. All done. So then they can play again. Um, pretty, pretty basic and easy. I really, really, really like this. Then the really good thing is in my area, I can go to reports and I can click on the game that all of my kids have played. I can see who's played it and what accuracy they got correct. Now I don't want to go show you my actual kids data from this year, but the really fun thing about this is that you can see where the misconceptions would be and you would know what to reteach, okay? So you can view the quiz, you can even look at flashcards, they even tell you the most missed question, which are all tools to help us just become better um, educators, especially with distance learning, okay? So super fun, super helpful. Now that was creating your own game. So the other thing I want to show you is how to find games that are already created. So I'm going to go over here to find a quiz. And I'm going to type in a different skill. I just typed in rhyming. And you can see all these pre-made games already came up. So I'm just going to go to the first one. It says it was played a lot. It says K through first grade and eight people like it. So I can click on it. And I have no clue who this is. Um, I did not make it. 
Oh, but you can see they use those images that I was showing you earlier, and then they give them options. So here's the great thing. If I like this game, and this is something I want to use, I can save it to my games. I can like it right there with a the heart, and I can even edit it. So when I hit edit, it duplicated this game and put it in my, um, my batch, and then I can go through and edit whatever I want on this game. So say I just, I like it, I just want to add a different time to all of these. Bam. Super simple, go through, bump up that time. I don't think 30 seconds is a lot for reading those words, but, um, you know, what if I just want to change it? So say I'm finished with that, then I can just go up here to finish quiz. Saving it, and I'm going to do ELA. I don't want to share it. And then it gives me playing options as well. So I hope you can see how really, truly awesome and free quizzes is for the classroom. I hope that was helpful, and I really hope you love quizzes. Let me know if there's something else you need help with on that.